Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to count the occurrences of one string inside another string. So if you got a big string like Richard is super awesome and you want to see how many times Richard appears in there, you'll get a one. Or Tasha was killed by Black Goo. Black Goo was killed, ta killed Tasha. You want to find the Tashas, you'll get a two. So we'll count the number of times a string or just a character appears inside that string. This is a developer level fast tip. What does that mean? Well, that means you're going to need to know a little bit of VBA to understand what I'm talking about. If you don't know VBA, if you've never done any VBA programming before, don't be scared of it. This video teaches you everything you need to know to get started. And it's about 20 minutes long. And don't, it's, there's nothing to worry about. Just watch this and then come on back. Now, if you're thinking to yourself that you might have seen me cover this topic before, you would be correct. I actually covered this topic way back, about two years ago, in my four next loops video, where I show you how to do a four next loop. And in that video, I'm going to take you inside the code vault here. In that video, we built something similar to this guy. And I use a brute force approach to figuring out the count of the occurrences. And there's nothing wrong with this approach. It works fine. I wrote this code probably 10 years ago, and it's been working fine for me ever since. Never had a problem with it. Basically, you take string 1, string 2, and write S and C. Okay, check to see if they're null or empty strings, which technically the is null would never work because you can't pass a null value if that's a string. We'll talk about that in a minute. You'll get an error with that, which I never had happen before. Um, then we simply say the counter is set to zero, loop from x equals one to the length of the string, and then just see, okay, if the mid of that string at that location is equal to c, the smaller string, then increment your counter and continue on, loop through the whole thing. And again, this works just fine. I always have like a brute force approach in my brain when I first tackle a problem. I always think in terms of loops and, and things like that, because that's how I was born as a programmer doing old basic stuff right you know for loops and that kind of stuff so sometimes you don't always think that there's a more elegant solution available to maybe just use a little math so i came across this guy the concept of it and doing a little bit more research i figured out that this is probably the better way to do it what you essentially do is you just replace the small string with an empty string inside the big string right count the difference in the number of characters between those two strings now divide it by the size of that small string and that will tell you how many of those small strings occur in the big string so if i got a string like this and i want to count the number of r's in it right my name is richard rost if i start here and i loop through it right one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay there's an r count that one right that's the, that's the brute force approach but if I simply take this string, okay, and I replace the R's with nothing, with blanks, an empty string like that, okay, now I count that string, I see there's two characters less, divide that by the length of that initial string, and now, which is one, and you can tell right from that what the count is, okay? Same thing here with the black goo, okay? Do the same thing, replace Tasha with an empty string, replace it there with an empty string, count how many characters different you got there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, okay, 10 divided by 5, which is the length of Tasha, is 2, there are two of those in that string, a lot more elegant than a brute force approach, and it runs a lot faster too, now, you're not going to notice the speed on your average computer, but if you're doing a big, big query with tens of thousands of records, Right, and you got to run that on all of them. It, it could make you know a noticeable difference in speed. So here's the function. Uh, gold members, you'll be able to go to the code vault and just hit copy. The rest of you get type and pause the video. There you go. All right, another reason to upgrade the gold. All right, so now that I got that code copied to my clipboard, I can go to my tech help free template. I can go to a global module. If you don't have one, if you got an older version of the template or you're using your own database, go to create module, not class module, module, and then come in here and go into there. Come on, there it is. And we'll just paste that down here. The global module that comes with the tech help template. Now I added the sleep. I, I've been using the sleep function 
in a lot of my videos, so I just decided to just put it in there. But there's my count occur, right? Okay, now I can save that, and we can throw this in a query. We can use it in a form. We can put it anywhere you want. Let's put it in a query. Create query design. I'm going to bring in my customer table. And let's see how many times the first name field occurs inside the notes field. All right, so notes will be our big string, and first name will be our little string. And we can come right over here. I'll zoom in. All right, and we'll say C is count occur. That's the name of the function. Notes, comma, first name. You can, if you want to put something in here like R, you want to count the number of R's or exclamation points, you can put an actual string in there. But I'm going to use two fields like that. Okay, and this, by the way, this is also why I switched this to variant instead of string, because if these are strings and you try to pass a null value into it, then you'll get an error. Your, your, uh, your, your, your query will show pound error all over the place, and you don't want that. No one wants to see pound error, right? So at least now it'll just return a zero. It'll say, okay, if is null s or c, then it'll exit the function with a value of zero. And you can only do that with variants. You can't do that with string values. Okay, so let's save this. I'll just call this my count of whatever Q. <laughs> and then we'll run it. And I can see Richard already appears in there. And I'm just going to copy this guy here. Copy. And where's Tasha? We'll paste that in there. And there's a two. <laughs> the most disappointing death in all of science fiction, I think, was when she was killed by the black goo. <laughs> All right, so there you go. There's your fast tip for today and a little, you know, walk down memory lane for my four next video. Go watch that if you want to. Um, it, it's still a good example to use for a four next loop, so I'm going to keep that old video around. It's a good video. And like I said, that code works great. I've been using it for years. But uh, this also shows you that a lot of times if you want to uh, look at ways to speed up your database, take a look at things that you're doing iteratively, iteratively like that. Try to say that ten times fast iteratively like like counting loops and stuff like that sometimes there's a faster way to uh to process data than to just use loops all the time loops are easy i'll often program a solution with a loop first and then if things are running slow i'll see how i can optimize that um i learned basic programming on my old coco a trs80 back when i was like eight um, so my brain tends to think in terms of loops i'm i'm a big for next loop guy right or while loops and after that, I was a C programmer. And I learned SQL many years later. I was probably in my 20s when I first learned SQL. And so sometimes I don't always think of a solution like a lot of things you can do. I try to think of it, you know, iteratively with like a record set looping through records versus letting the server do the work with an SQL statement. So I have to go back and say to myself, OK, can I I got this working now with VB. Can I accomplish the same thing better and faster with SQL? That's one of my challenges. And I'm always learning and always growing as a developer myself. So I learn things, too, almost every day. I, I, I am very disappointed if I don't learn something every day. So that's it. There's your fast tip for today and a bit of pontificating from yours truly. And uh, I hope you learned something. I know I did. We'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. 
You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry. These free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.